My name is John L. Oak, O-K-E. Uh, I am a veteran. I flew, joined the RCAF, and when I arrived in England, I was transferred to the RAF. I started off my training in Toronto. I lived in Toronto all my life. I was in school at 19, on just after my birthday. I decided it was my turn to uh, do my duty, and I went down to uh, headquarters for recruitment on Bay Street. Uh, the first person I ran into was one of my teachers who had joined up, and I was promptly told, what am I doing there? He put me on leave of absence, and they sent me back to finish my year, which I did at Oak Collegiate. Uh, in May the next year, I began my Air Force career, the first part of it. I figured I would be sent out to somewhere, Brandon or Montreal. I was assigned to Manning Depot down at number one at the exhibition ground. It was quite a time. It was training. And everybody started at the beginning. You were an AC2, they didn't come any lower. Some people at one time thought it was Air Commander or Second Class, but no, it was AC2 aircraft. The uh, next time I got involved, we went to a ITS, which was the Advanced Training Unit, which happened to be Ghoul Street, so I didn't get out of Toronto again. A final, uh, after getting my LAC, we were sent to Fingal, first off in general duties, and then on our bombing and gunnery school. It was in the winter time, and it was rough. Anson's and Bolingbrooks were our uh, flight group doing the towing of the kites. I figure, well, I've been in this lucky, Fingal, is likely going to be out west. I got assigned to Malton and for my navigation. So I graduated at Malton, took my overseas training or embarkation, and off we went on a, uh, to Maitland for a commando course. The only interesting part there, we were told we were going to be leaving soon. I went to get a haircut in Truro, and the barber said, oh, you're leaving on the a boat in Halifax, the Royal, uh, His Majesty's Royal Mail Ship Andes. And I thought, oh, I, he doesn't know. It was quite a shock when I had to go on board the vessel and it was the Andes and he had it right down to the hour in the day. And that kind of scared me, but fortunately we were solo and we arrived in England at Liverpool, Time. It started off that we were advised um, off and on that we were going to go to the continent and bring back prisoners of war, our own, and different things that happened. We never made it. But finally, we were trained to, or advised that we were going to go on manna flights, and it was explained to us from the biblical deal was food. The people in Holland were starving to death. They were on the ground. Uh, Nothing was moving, nothing was coming in. Uh, we knew this from what we heard and read in the papers. And this particular day, finally, we were off we went. They took and hung food sacks, like flour and different food were put onto our bomb racks. And finally, they closed the doors and off we went. When we approached, uh, our wireless operator turned on the uh, radio and we heard them mention that to the Germans, the, the aircraft that are approaching are RAF, they are carrying food to Holland, they are unarmed. This was very pertinent to them. We came in, we were very low. We could see the Germans marching around on the, on the ground, rifles, nobody shot. First raid, I think, was into Rotterdam. Rotterdam had been totally wiped out in the middle it was all paved over, it was a huge area, and that is where we dropped our first load of food. We finally were able to make five more additional to the airport, to, in, to uh, The Hague, and it felt very, very 
wonderful that we're able to finally do something. And here was a Lancaster doing what it wasn't intended for, dropping the food. Later on in the fifth and sixth flights, uh, people decided to send more food. So they got to the point that they uh, actually had food on the Bombay doors, but unfortunately the Bombay doors didn't have the hydraulics to keep them closed. So consequently, we, somebody would sing out from the turret at the rear, we're losing our load. So we finally had to, one of us had to be pumping the hydraulics all the way across. It was great. We got food through to Holland and we did our job. I came back very grateful none of the crew were injured. We had ended up that the four of us, five of us were Canadian, the skipper, my navigator Archie Armstrong, Jim uh, Wilson, and uh, also Chris, can't remember his last name, the mid-upper gunner, Chris was the rear gunner. Uh, we finally picked up at conversion uh, Barney, who was South African, and he was our engineer. We were very grateful that we all came through, but when we got through, we were all dispersed. Canadians went to Rough Earth. How many aircraft would have taken part in the mana drops? I think there would be, from our group alone, would be around 30. Multiply that by the squadrons, I'd say anywhere up to 1,000. I mean, one, they. In one drop. Well, they would come one after the, one other. after the other. You'd have a wing go through, and then they'd have a. They'd leave it for a while, and then they'd come through. I, I don't know how many actually. Uh, I don't think it even mentions in my records there. But I know it wasn't. We weren't alone. But at this time, we were lined up very politely. We weren't racing. We were doing a good job. And how many thousand pounds would you take in at a time, roughly? I know it was in it was in thousands, tons. But as I say, they got kind of uh, between the hydraulics weakening and we weakening. They they were putting so much food on the doors. Even they didn't not only on the hangers. They were, uh, in other words, were using the uh, bomb kit to release the loads. We had control of the drop. Food would be basics? Basics, only flour, anything that could roll. Now these were in bags. They weren't full bags. When they hit, they rolled, and that saved them from bursting. Now you'd still see flour going up white, but uh, for every one that burst, I know that 50 or 60 didn't burst. I mean, the food was not gourmet. It was a basic. They didn't even have, they were actually, we hear, they were eating tulips. Yes. Yes. They didn't have anything. And as I say, just by reading recently, I didn't even know that they didn't have any food coming into Holland. They had a strike on that they couldn't even get anybody in. So it, it was a desperate situation.